Good morning everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here then we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. Today's video is another cooking video. Uh, I spent a whole lot of time in the kitchen because we're trying to figure out what needs to get used before the next shopping trip. So the next shopping trip is next week. So we're on week five of six of what we've got here. So we're low on snacks because uh, we're at the end of the shopping period not that we buy a lot of processed snacks but we are low on what we had uh, and low on a few other bits and pieces so making things stretch and working out what needs to be used and cleaned up out of the fridge and freezer before the next trip and things like that so I'm spending a fair bit of time doing some cooking and baking and that for the kids to use up stuff and to get us through and things like that so I thought I'd bring you along today to see what we got done uh, we've got a surplus of eggs at the moment so I tried some salt cured egg yolks and then we did sourdough biscotti and orange and almond cake with jars of orange that I had canned and put on the frit on the shelf so uh, a few different bits and pieces so uh, enjoy watching and I will see you again next time thanks guys So to start off my baking day, I made some sourdough biscotti. Now, I've been experimenting with sourdough biscotti for quite a while. I really like biscotti because it's not very sweet. Uh, it's sort of, it's not savory, but it, it's getting close to being a savory biscuit that I can have with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or just as a snack without being overly sweet. It lasts for weeks in a jar because it's it's got that double cooked texture to it and things like that and I just really enjoy it around Christmas time I really like doing some slightly fancier ones with maybe some white chocolate drizzle and things like that but throughout the year I normally just make a really sort of a basic one so I've been experimenting with a bunch of recipes today's recipe uh, I'll share just a sec had to grab the other notebook <laughs> so this one was 340 grams of flour with two teaspoons of baking powder half a teaspoon of salt 60 grams of butter i used ghee it seemed to work fine 150 grams of sugar to three eggs and 150 grams of starter with some vanilla so a fairly basic i'll try and remember to put that in the description but if i forget and you want it just ask me in the comments and i'll do it there and then i added half a cup each of choc chips and some walnuts so you could use any mix-ins here you could use fruits or any kind of nuts i got those walnuts on special when i bought my bulk food order because they're short dated so i'm using up walnuts and the choc chips are dairy free dark chocolate chips from honest to goodness as well so uh, they're not overly sweet but they give that little uh, burst of chocolatey flavor so they worked quite well for it as well so it's uh, just a standard sort of a biscotti dough with the sourdough starter in it you don't leave it to ferment an extended period of time though you could you could stick it in the fridge and let it ferment overnight it wouldn't hurt it uh, but I didn't at this particular point it's more just using up starter because I had some excess because I haven't been making as much bread and it adds to the texture it definitely changes the texture slightly uh, but in a good way in my opinion so we started that we made the dough uh, and I had this little clip here which I hadn't seen until I watched the video where Karvik is sitting there trying to you know help by occasionally stealing a chocolate chip off the side of the bowl so I thought that was too cute not to share so once you make all the dough I just use the thermomix to bring it all together you could use anything you wanted to do it a KitchenAid bowl anything but my hands are a bit sore at the moment so I'm using the Thermix for a lot of things you want to shape it into logs on your tray for the first bake so all I did was split it approximately in half and shaped it into logs your preference as to what shape you want those logs to be or whether you want it to be exact or anything like that uh, if you use wet hands then it it makes it easier to shape it it doesn't stick as badly it won't rise or spread very much so the log size that you're making is going to be approximately what it comes out as it will puff up a little bit but not exceptionally so keep that in mind when you are shaping your log because when you do your second slicing that this is the sort of shape that your slices are going to come out as so I stuck that in the oven and while that was in the oven I moved on to the next thing so it was very much a baking day today the next thing I did was one of my whole orange almond cakes so when I had oranges in season over winter I canned a whole lot of boiled oranges so I just boiled them 
skin and all pureed them and stuck them in jars and then processed them so that I would have pureed oranges navel oranges so no seeds in the on the shelf to make this orange and almond cake that we all really enjoy we make a chocolate version or a plain version and everyone really loves it so I decided to make that today as well because I've got plenty of jars of oranges on the shelf so the first thing I do is I grind my sugar to icing sugar in the thermomix uh, and once that's nice and fine I add the almonds and I grind it again so you've got a really fine sugar almond floury meal type thing to start with and once you've got that you just add all your other ingredients so everything else that's added is the oranges now by weight it's supposed to be about 375 grams these jars end up being about 400 ish plus grams so I think I'm going to alter the recipe slightly next time and see if I can get it uh, the ratio is a little bit better this works even with the excess oranges but it is very I'll show you the photo of the cake I forgot to show it sliced but I've got a photo of the cake later uh, and it's um it's very very dense because of the extra moisture which it's always a dense cake anyway but more so so we're gonna I'm gonna play with that so I add the jar of oranges and then six eggs of course these are our chicken eggs so I crack them one by one in a bowl before adding them to the thermix so I don't accidentally destroy all the rest of the ingredients that are in there by sticking a bad egg in there and then it has baking powder and then you just blend it so speed five just bring it all together again you could do it in a bowl you could do it in KitchenAid whatever you want uh, if you aren't going if you don't have a kitchen uh, sorry if you don't have a thermix I would suggest buying fine sugar and um, almond meal because if it does have too many chunks in it it does change the texture of the cake I've done it before and it's fine but it's not it's not as good as if you've got it nice and finely ground so then it just blends and it goes into a tin so I use a 20 I think it's a 23 centimeter tin and it's not ideal for this cake to be honest it should be more of a 20 centimeter tin but I don't have one at the moment uh, I got given a uh, one of the tins with the removable sides by I think it was Candy who gave it to me uh, on here and um, I use it for cheesecakes and stuff but I didn't think that I probably could have used it for this cake but anyway uh, I used the Kmart liners that I've mentioned before these are great uh, they were really cheap from Kmart and they seem to clean up really well they fold into all different shaped tins and things like that I'd really like a square one or a like a lasagna dish size one would be great but I've got round and loaf tins and they're both working really well uh, so I just poured the cake in there and it goes in the oven it cooks low and slow sort of uh, 175 maybe at uh, for 45 50 minutes um, it doesn't rise a whole lot uh, it just has a little bit of a doming to it and it's it's a very moist and dense cake so while that was in the oven, I had taken, or while I was making that, I'd taken the biscotti out of the oven. And so that went in the oven. And then with the biscotti, once it was cool enough to handle, that's when you do your second, you do your slicing for your second bake. So you need to slice it. A serrated knife, like a bread knife, works best. And just go slow and steady. And slice it into uh, strips that you then put back on the baking tray to be baked again. Uh, I probably cut these a little thick, but I wanted to fit them all on one tray it does mean the thicker you do it uh, the less crisp the end result is because if you cook it too long you're just going to burn it uh, so you won't get it that crispy texture so these are a little bit biscuity uh, but it's fine the a little bit thinner would have been better for getting that that biscotti texture so you slice them and put them on the baking tray and put it in the oven again for until it's crisped up again the same way as what you did the first time you can uh, flip them if you want or you can not and then one side will be darker than the other side which is kind of nice to look at it just depends on personal preference there um, I did burn a few of them because I'm using the barbecue and one side of the barbecue has a solid plate one side has a grill and the things that are over the grill tend to burn a little bit so I really need to get a second solid plate for there but I haven't as yet uh, once the so the orange cake had to come out of the oven before that the biscotti could go into the oven so I pulled that out uh, and let it cool a bit before I took it off the the um, liner as you can see the liner barely stuck to it it does have a little bit of a less round shape because the liner uh, folds so it ends up with little folds in it and that's partly because the 
cake tin is too large as well. Uh, it's a very moist, very dense cake. Um, I forgot to get a video of it being cut up and the kids ate it before I got a chance to do anything about it. But it's, um, it's a favourite here. Uh, this is the biscotti after the second bake, so once it's cooled down completely, I stuck it in jars. You don't want to put it in jars while it's warm because it will just soften up, so it has to be cold, completely cold, before it can do it. So I put as much as I could in this jar, and the rest went into a little Pyrex bowl that I put next to my desk so that I could snack on it this evening. Because, you know, after all, it was something that was made mostly for me. <laughs> The next thing I had to do was I decided to do salt curing of egg yolks. Now, we have a lot of eggs coming in at the moment. We have 20 odd eggs a day coming in at least. And we use a lot of them. Things like Dutch baby pancakes and stuff. We use 18 eggs per Dutch baby pancake and stuff. So we do use a lot, but we are a little overrun at the moment as well. So uh, Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead does salt cured egg yolks and there's a lot of people who do but she's hers is the most recent that I've seen uh, and that she said are perfect for grating as a parmesan substitute so I thought that that would be really neat because we don't eat dairy so I'm doing a trial run initially and if this works out well I might do a larger batch I'll find a larger container to do it so what you need to do is you need to fill your containers like put a good layer of salt in your containers with all my reading there is it's like salt curing anything else you can do straight salt or you can do half salt half sugar so I decided to do a container of each this is a good time for me to do it because uh, there's only a week till the grocery trip so there's lots of space in the fridge so I wanted to get it done now so in each container I put a good inch and a half I suppose of salt or sugar and salt mix in the container and then made little divots in it so that with the back of a teaspoon so that I could put the egg yolks in there I placed the egg yolks in those divots um, and then covered the rest of it with the salt or the salt and sugar mix so that they were completely covered I think I had a couple of egg yolks crack which it means that they're going to seep out and not cure I'm not real sure how it works this is my first time so I'll bring you back as I do this because they'd stay in the fridge for seven days and then they have to be pulled out and wrapped in cheesecloth and put back somewhere cool which for me is the fridge uh, for another seven days to dry out completely so I'll bring you along as I do it uh, but I'm a bit concerned that a couple of the egg yolks cracked and I'm I'm not overly sure so like there's a little there was a little string of white hanging off most of these egg yolks and the ones that I tried to get that off they're the ones that ended up with a piece that a part that a flaw and ended up cracking uh, so the other ones I left it on there but I don't know if those whites being on there is an issue for them curing so anyway we will see how it goes that is the idea is to give it a go anyway uh, this is our trial run if we can get it to work we'll do a larger batch so because there was a whole bunch of spare egg whites, I froze some of them. Uh, I just froze them in egg trays and I'll use them for baking in another time. Uh, but I also decided to make some macaroons for the kids. So I used eight of the egg whites when in the freezer, eight were used for this. Uh, so I had to whip the egg whites. Again, I used my Thermomix because that's what I've got. I put the butterfly in, which is the little whisking attachment that goes inside, and put my eight egg whites in there and whipped them till they were fairly stiff peaks. Uh, once the it runs at about speed 3.5 and it just keeps on going until it hits the point that you want to turn it off. Uh, once the whites were whipped up, then I had to add the sugar a spoonful at a time. So I checked to make sure they were right. Then I turned it back on to 3.5 and I just spooned sugar in through the lid as it was going and it turned into meringue, which was lovely. It was a lovely uh, texture. Uh, it's nice and shiny and it held its shape and it was lovely. So that's great. Sometimes meringues and egg whites can be an issue in the thermix bowl if it's not clean enough. You should always do a vinegar rinse before doing whipping egg whites, but I didn't. <laughs> and it still worked so I was lucky in this particular instance uh, then basically you just add the coconut to it so it's a whole lot of coconut I think it was 600 grams of coconut for this amount of egg white uh, and I used the thermix to mix it a little bit and then I mixed it by hand and then just dolloped it onto a tray now I haven't made macaroons in years and years and years uh, it's a fair amount of sugar for a treat so it's not something I make all that often uh, mostly I do macarons or uh, the German Christmas stars that have the whipped egg whites or things like that I, I rarely do something that's an actual uh, meringue 
and so uh, I should have gone smaller the what I I I dolloped about into larger pieces because I didn't want to use too many trays but it meant that they didn't cook all the way like they cooked in the middle but they were still soft and from what I remember of macaroons they're supposed to be chewy and kind of firm and these were very soft Uh, so they have to be cooked fairly low temperature like a meringue uh, for an extended time I did extend the time out that I cooked them but it didn't um they still they browned up nicely on the outside but when you broke them open they were still soft in the middle and of course the kids ate them before I got a chance to (laughs) take any video of them as well I'll see I might have a photo so if I find a photo I'll put it in here but the kids ate them all they enjoyed them and why wouldn't they they're meringue with coconut but they weren't quite right and I may give it another go when I do the next lot of egg yolks just to see if I can get them a little bit better more like a meringue and less like they were just chewy they just weren't quite weren't quite what I was after but the kids ate them and that's the main thing so that was everything today it was a big day in the kitchen with lots of baking and it left me with a whole bunch of stuff for a couple of days though you know my children tend to eat it fairly quickly thank you very much for joining me and I will see you again next time